Side quest time. Scent is so important as we navigate our daily lives. We may not use perfume all the time, but we use deodorants every single day automatically, sometimes even multiple times a day. But commercial off-the-shelf deodorants always made my skin feel funny after a while. And once I started looking into this, it's no wonder given the ingredients they use to literally jam your pores, purge the microbiome, and in effect stop your body's natural functions. It all seems very harsh. There's also the waste that comes with the production of all of this and the constant stream of millions of nasty plastic shells, mostly discarded after one single use. But there's one more thing, and this will seem trivial against the arguments coming from health or environment. Convenience. The size and shape of the more popular brands make deodorant a thing of its own, something that needs to occupy more space than I'd like it to. I'd actually much prefer something smaller on the go. I want a light gym bag and also something that I forget I have with me, something invisible for a quick top up if necessary during a long day. So let's shift the paradigm. Let's ask some questions. Are there effective formulations that I can make at home with simple natural ingredients? Given this, and the fact that I have a 3D printer that can work with biodegradable filaments, is there a better form factor I can subscribe to for on-the-go use? Can I shape the deodorant with enough precision to actually use it? And can I produce this reliably and easily enough to scale with relative convenience without any discarded parts? In my pursuit for a real commercial alternative, I decided early on that I'm not going to seek clogging of pores. Instead, I focused on researching natural ingredients that might keep things fresh during the day without inhibiting my skin's natural responses. Eventually, after quite a bit of digging, I settled on three core simple ingredients I already had in my kitchen as the base. Corn flour, coconut oil, and bicarbonate of soda. Why I landed on these? Well, corn flour is there to absorb moisture, thicken the mix, and prevent it from feeling greasy. Coconut oil contains lauric acid, which seems to inhibit odor causing bacteria, moisturizes the skin unlike alcohol based deodorants and uh, it's also meant to bind the dry ingredients together. Finally bicarbonate of soda is meant to raise the pH of the skin into alkaline levels which makes the skin much less attractive to the harmful bacteria. After a few iterations to get the proportions just right it started to look promising. I found my base. Next I had to find the cherry on top, the right essential oils. Essential oils not only add a lot of freshness and beautiful fragrance but can also bring their own antimicrobial properties but which one to pick for my use case I had no idea so thought I'd do some primary research I first marked the oils mix them around label them and use their numbers to identify the blends the base mix stayed the same the only difference between different containers was the blend of oils when I did the formulations I have to say the entire flat started to smell phenomenally I should do this more often I thought I put the containers in the fridge to solidify and they settled predictably on a lovely consistency it wasn't a cream or a liquid but a very firm almost most professional deodorant stick. I wanted to make sure this stayed consistent at temperature, so still in the spirit of bootstrapping, I used my 3D printer as a temperature control chamber to simulate a warmer climate. To my surprise, the consistency was stable. Over the next couple of weeks, I proceeded to test the blends as I went about my fairly active life. Two winners seemed to work best for me. Lavender and tea tree. I may change the blends or add some later, but for now, this was a dangerous idea. I had an effective formula that was lovely to apply and it seemed to hold its physical shape really well. It was time to stop procrastinating and push through to the next part, designing a good shell for it. Remember, the catalyst behind all of this for me was the inconvenient size of deodorant. I contemplated on this over many days when I was searching for the proportions of a suitable container for my formulation. I wanted to have it on me and not even notice it, much like other objects, like my keys, my slim wallet, my watch and AirPods. That was it. As soon as my mind clicked on the AirPods, the design dialogue really started and it seemed obvious. If something seems obvious in hindsight, it's a good hint that you might be onto something. Immediately, at least in my imagination for now, the product gained an identity and a place to live. While this was still warm in my head, I fired up CAD and started working. Unlike the AirPods case, I wanted maximum space utilization, which means not too many rounded edges. And an overall flat design for easy printing, but more importantly, to slide into pockets with greater ease. I could visualize the overall idea. I wanted a case with a screw-mounted caddy that presented just the right amount of deodorant upon each turn. But I debated with myself so many design decisions at this stage. How should I best access the insides? Maybe on the long edge, maybe on the short edge, maybe the bottom wheel that pushes the stick up should be smaller 
similar to avoid accidental bumps, but maybe the whole bottom becomes the screw lever, which will make it satisfying to turn on purpose and difficult to turn by accident. Maybe the cap should be smaller to save material, but that means that there are two visible seams and that makes the design less intuitive to open. So to simplify things, maybe the outer shell should just be overlapping the entire inner shell. The inner structure was fairly easy to come up with, since I had the general idea about dimensions. Plus I thought I could always come back to tweak this later. I drafted the rest based on the dimensions of the inner and got to visualize the overall aesthetic quite early on. As I was working on the overlap between the outer and the inner, I realized there was a cool thing that I could do. If I overlapped the outer shell even further, I could tuck in the lever edges. Why is this cool? Well, because when you close the deodorant, the lever would also lock itself as part of the same motion. Excellent. I was really pleased with the simplicity of this. I thought I'd send the rough draft components to print first while I continued to work on the rest. I find it really useful to hold things in my hands and let that feeling guide the more refined design. As the first batch was printing, I turned towards battering against an old enemy the screw. I hate designing screws for 3D printing. I still have no idea how to make the ideal screw with all the dimensions, clearances, pitches, etc. So just like before, in absence of reliable knowledge, I pushed through trial and error. I played with the automated function, watched some YouTube. I had to go through a few prints to get it just right so that it prints well, it doesn't push too much material with half turns and it meshes just right with the caddy. I still had to work a lot on refining the clamp that holds everything in place. Much more work than I imagined a little clamp might require. Even after many iterations, it was still really awkward to push in. But then, after playing with the angles, clearances and print settings, we finally got a click. And just like that, for the first time since the beginning, I could touch the whole assembled thing. A new object that never existed before. This is difficult to describe. It's a unique feeling that fuels creative endeavors. I'd heavily recommend tasting it. Anyways, after a brief moment of relief, I had to snap out of it because the job was really not done. Now I had to figure out a way to fill this up reliably with the formulation. There were a lot of ideas going through my mind to perform this operation that I've never tried before. Some ideas probably very stupid, like I thought of creating half half molds for this, but I quickly abandoned the idea because I thought it would be quite easy to mess everything up in the absence of reliable TPU printing, but also I thought it was imprecise and awkward to push into the shell. A silicon negative would still have this awkward insert issue of something that's very slippery by design. But I would have stuck with this idea had the real winner not hit me. I watched an episode of House and I saw it. Syringes or more specifically injection. It would minimize the messy molds and would also allow the whole thing to slide precisely in place. I was really happy with this. Now I've never designed a delivery system by injection before, so I wasn't quite sure how to start. It was already late, but I had to get this out. I knew I needed a syringe body, a piston to push things and a cap to help flip swap the stick. Why do I need this? I could have designed something that just pushes directly into the main body of the deodorant system, but I wanted to maximize the volume of available formulation, so I'll need an intermediary step because of that. I got a little confused at first since we're talking about negatives and positives and then negatives again and uh, I'm really not proud of how I ended up modeling this. It was very brutalistic but to my defense it was late, I was tired and I knew from the start it wasn't going to be the most elegant approach but I wanted to push through and get it done. Next morning I was ready to test it out. Now you might think isn't it just going to be a mess and spill around the piston holes? Sure but I closed those off with a little bit of blue tack and it seemed to work really well. Is there a better overall mechanism? Yes, but this will have to do for now. With everything ready, it was time to make my first batch. I call this Fresh Pod. Viewer, luckily all that was needed was for me to shim something around the edges for a bit and we were back in business. Not perfect, but it worked. 
All right. Oh my God. Test. <sighs> this design is far from perfect. This is more of a proof of concept than anything else. But for what it is, I'm really pleased with my very own fresh pod. I've been using it daily and it's holding up surprisingly well. Might be interesting to see how it performs during the heat of summer, I suppose. Let me know if you found this interesting or if you have some improvement ideas I should try building into the system. I had a blast designing this, even though it's not exactly my normal domain of exploration. I hope you found this journey stimulating and maybe it gave you some ideas. Please consider commenting, liking and subscribing. It means a lot knowing that some of the this resonates with you. I have some interesting ideas coming in the pipeline. I can't wait to share more with you. Thanks for sticking with me to the end and I'll see you in the comments very soon.